great science that we've been doing and relevant science to the Red Lake area in terms of our forest ecology we've been studying. But the, the, the project is, you know, really when you think about it, we're trying to think about how to study science and st study science in the classroom, which is the environment, how to study it outside. And this, like I said, this collaboration is based on that. How do we learn about our environment and how do we help it guide us in terms of the kind of classes we want to take and the things we want to learn and go in our future in terms of finishing college and going to graduate school. And the hope is that the Gem Scholars will want to come to graduate school at Purdue or think about UND. Oh, UND. Much better. Um, <laughs> much better. <laughs> yeah, it'd be pretty good. Well, I think I'll tell you, finish college, go to Community State undergraduate, and then think about graduate school. Yes, graduate school, Community State. Well, all right. All right. The goal is. So you don't have to go to Purdue. Higher education. <laughs> and bringing your knowledge back here, too. And so you're learning things about your environment. We're learning things about your environment. This has been a fantastic educational experience for, for all of us. As well. And the, the, for those of you who don't know, I'm sorry this is not coming, coming out there about here, but the students from Red Lake who are, who are part of a, of a GEM Scholars program. And it's a program that's a collaboration in, in every sense of the word, where we learn with the students, the students learn from us, and we're using basically this is the classroom. Let me get, maybe dim the lights a little bit. Um, your environment is the classroom. Uh, the beautiful area around Red Lake is the classroom. And we get to look at it with different eyes, different perspectives. Because all, all, everybody who's part of it knows something different about it. I study the soil, and I study how organic matter goes into the soil and gets degraded, and how um, bacteria and fungi basically change the nature of it. We have people who are part of it who are economists, uh, Dr. Pat Welly, who are geologists, Dr. Tim Kruger, who are forestry folk, <laughs> foresters, uh, uh, Dr. George Parker, and meteorologists, um, Dr. Suzanne Zern Berkheimer. And we have a visiting scholar who's an expert in earthworms. And she's going to talk about the importance of our, one of the aspects of what we've been studying is how invasive earthworms have been changing your forests. Something that most people don't even know about and that the earthworms that you see up here didn't come from here and they weren't always here. And they can have unintended consequences uh, by their impact. And they're here a lot of times because of fishermen, they're here because of moving of soil, but um, uh, Dr. Hale is going to go over that in detail. But like I said, this is a great honor. I, this is awesome that we have so many people here because you guys, you guys got to ask questions of the college students here about what they did and I hope it excites you to think about being here and uh, you're going to quickly, quickly um, run to the end of my uh, Ojibwe language skills. A quick miigwech for um, letting me be here. I'm really honored to be here and have been invited. Um, um, it's a real treat for me. And, and um, I didn't know we were going to have fifth graders here. Boy, I would have brought a whole bunch of other cool stuff. <laughs> I do. I have games and all kinds of things that we do um, that help us learn about forest ecology. And so maybe are you, you look a little older. Are you their teacher today? Today? <laughs> okay. Maybe we can talk before you leave, and I can try to hook you up with some of these other tools, <coughs> classroom tools that we have that are really fun um, ways for you guys to kind of get doing stuff instead of just sitting at a desk having somebody lecture at you. You actually get to do stuff to learn, which is way more fun. So, and college students, I'm really excited to be talking to you guys about your projects. Um, and before I get started on my talky talk, I did want to plug this program we have at UMD, at the University of Minnesota Duluth. We have a fellowship program for students who are interested in going into math, uh, geology, chemistry, biology, to get a master's degree or a PhD, depending on the program. And this fellowship in particular can provide substan substantial support, $30,000 a year plus tuition. 
Um, so it's a very generous fellowship, but it's intended to, it's generous because we wanted to really recruit the best and the brightest and people who are committed to working with Native communities. We partner with the Fond du Lac tribal community and we have fellows go and actually work with teachers and students in the tribal college as well as at Cloquet, Cloquet and Proctor high schools which have large Native American communities. So it's really important to us that we try to recruit Native students because you guys need to have models from your own community on how how science and math and kind of an academic setting can coexist with your cultural and community needs. So if anybody's interested in this, you can always go to our website. It's the UMD GK12. And we'll be getting posters and stuff out. So soon you'll be inundated with this stuff. So that's my plug for my program. Any and now I'm going to talk about earthworms. So, everybody know what an earthworm is? Who doesn't know what an earthworm is? All right, or they're too afraid to raise their hand. <laughs> okay. Are earthworms good or bad? Are they good or bad? They're good. Yeah, why? Why are they good? Because they help our soil. Yeah, they help our soil. And, and what do they do that helps the soil? Does anybody, can anybody tell me? Got an idea? Toss a wild idea out. What do they do? What do they actually do? Think about being a worm. Okay, you're a worm. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? You just sit there? You move? How do you move? Where do you go? Mr. Welling. <laughs> okay, pretend you're a worm. <laughs> okay, now where are you going? I fall in the mud a lot. You fall in the mud a lot. <laughs> okay, so he's squiggling around in dirt. And what do you eat? Rabbits? Venison? <laughs> wild rice? How's the wild rice crop this year? I'm curious. I'm totally other than no. Anybody know? You don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I was just curious as I was driving up. I wonder if wild rice crop this year. Not these kinds of worms. No, aquatic worms will eat wild rice. But these are what we call terrestrial or land based worms. And so what do they eat? Leaves. Dirt and leaves, I heard. Very good. So basically they eat dirt and leaves. They ingest this dirt and leaves. And they get their nutrition by digesting the, <coughs> or the leaves, which is organic material, and the fungus and the bacteria and all the other stuff that's in the soil. They don't actually digest the dirt. That comes out in their cast material fancy scientific word for worm poop. Um, and that process of ingesting soil or organic matter and then pooping has really, really, really big effects on forests. And in particular in northern forests, because most of us have grown up playing with worms, right? But it's probably a surprise to you to realize that those are not, those worms weren't here when your great great grandfather and great great grandmother were roaming this land. Um, those worms are all European in origin. They were brought here with European settlement and were, have basically been moving along with European activities. So basically where we have seen the, the longest intensity, longest duration of Euro post European settlement activity, we tend to see lots and lots of, of earthworms. And so, generations ago, when your forefathers roamed these forests, the forests were completely earthworm free. There were no earthworms of any kind. And the forests actually looked different. Looks different when there are no earthworms.